Welcome back to Let's Play Neverwinter Nights 2 Storm of Zaheer. This is Big Los, and we are in Lyra's Trick, the inn and tavern in the city of Samurgal. So why don't we go around and see if we can talk to some of these people here in the tavern. I wonder if we can do a sleight of hand on any of them. However, I don't believe that I picked any sleight of hands as a skill. Let's go down here. Sleight of hand zero. Yep. All right. So we can't use sleight of hand. All right. So what does the bard have to say? He doesn't take requests. Okay. And peace, tall one. Oh, I guess you must be really short. I guess you'd be a, a gnome. Oh no, it's slender halfling. Okay. Very well. Anybody else in here that we can chat with? in this place something? Yeah, it actually looks kind of nice in here. Oh, that's rude. Alright, so before we leave, let's check out the rooms that are in here. This is the common room where we'll be staying if we pay money. And we can actually store stuff in this party armoire, and if we open it up, there's a gold piece in there, which we took because... You know, if you don't have any gold, one gold piece is better than none, right? And this room, I guess, is for other guests. Guest armoire. There's nothing in there. You can't loot any of the chests. And then here is the tavern's guest book. So this is where we can add people to our party, like companions or anything, or swap out any of the party members that we have now for other companions that we meet but I think we'll just keep the party members that we have plus we will be limited to one companion and if we get the leadership feat then we can get another one which is not how it works in D&D &D. in D&D &D it works by how many like cohorts you can have and it's based on your level and all that. It's pretty complicated, actually. And then your cohorts will get, like, half the experience you get and all that. Let's check out this bazaar, Open Palm Bazaar. You don't deal with rabble like us, huh? Well, you look like a monk with dual commas. In a black robe, huh? Okay, here's a gate over here. Now, you can't click on the gate, so I'm guessing it never opens. We're not allowed outside the merchant quarter. So, what's behind the doors? The residential areas? Kindly be on your way. Oh, here's the crafting station, so let's go up in here. And it says on this pop-up that crafting is a great way to customize things that we can't get. So, I'm guessing we're, we'll have to craft at least some items. Not all. I want to actually try to find items or buy them if possible. But look at that thing. That's turning. That's kind of cool. Alright, so... We got a magician's workbench over here. You actually can't open it up and put stuff in it like in the previous two campaigns. And then we got a chest over here. And if we open it up, there's a bunch of recipes in here. And the recipes tell you exactly how to build stuff. So you have to be near a workbench. You don't actually put stuff into the workbench. And then you have to have all these items and note that it does have a monetary cost for some reason. Like, it takes your gold and poof, it turns it into your item. But once you have something you want to craft, you come here and then you open up one of these recipe books and you double click on the recipe and then it will start to craft. And then in your book you can actually look up what you got. If you buy any recipes or take them, they will automatically go into these books that your party leader has. So 
So we don't have the gold required when we have one gold piece. Well, we probably don't have anything else either. If we did have the gold, it would probably come back at us and say, oh, you don't have the ore required or the skills in craft armor or anything like that. Okay, so we got the recipe for the shuriken, and that's probably going to be a good thing if we can't find them to be purchased anywhere. However, it says it costs one gold piece, so I'm guessing that's going to be one gold piece per shuriken. That's kind of not good. Because we're going to need, like, hundreds of those things. Well, I guess hundreds of gold pieces really isn't that big of a deal. I guess we'll see. And then it has this Tanglefoot bag that we can make if we really wanted to, but... Uh, you know what? In the original campaign, we did get a whole bunch of those items, and we barely used them. Because they stopped being useful after... Uh a certain level in the game. Alright, so let's go back outside into the bazaar and let's go over here and here's another door, but let's talk to this guy over here. You protect this place. Actually, you kind of look like an elf with your pointy ears. Alright, so let's go inside this place. This is the Temple of Joaquin. Or the Shrine of Joaquin. And there's really nothing in here. No treasure or other rooms or anything. So all we can do is just talk to this guy. And he's a cleric. So he could do healing services. He can raise the dead for a fee. Or he can sell us stuff. So why don't we click on that. And then we'll see what he has for sale. Looks like he just has a bunch of regular clothes. Nothing that will give us any AC bonuses. You know, nothing useful and nothing that we can afford either, even though it's really cheap. I mean, we could buy these bracers, but they don't provide any armor. Alright, and weapons. Looks like he has a bunch of standard weapons. I mean, we could probably get a Warhammer if we had the money. I think the sling is the cheapest thing that he had. And then he sells some divine spells and he sells potions. You know, just a regular cleric selling stuff. And then he has a bone wand for crafting. And he sells these coins of life. I wonder if it's just one or if you can buy a whole bunch of them. And then he also sells recipes that you can buy. And the recipes aren't very expensive. Until you get to like the plus one items. And then there's this thing called the Stone of Alarm which lets you rest in caves or ruins, but not outdoors for some reason, and it doesn't say why. Because I'm guessing it it rings when there's yes. an enemy around. And the hide armor is only going to be selling for four gold. Four gold, that's it? Lugging this stupid thing around? Well, you know what, let's see if we can get a better yes. price elsewhere. I'm guessing we won't be getting the best prices inside the temple, or the shrine. Alright, well before we continue on the perimeter, let's go up here and talk to these people. Agreed to travel. Do your weapons mean you have wares for me? Let's see what these other people have to say. Uh, aren't you a little chilly in that? <laughs> I don't see much of a store around you. What do you want to buy? Aren't you a little chilly in that? <laughs> are you not overheated? Perhaps if you are accustomed to the cool breezes of the bay, I could understand that. But within the sweltering jungles of Chult, this is the garb of the wise. Okay, so I guess we're in a jungle region, if you didn't notice from all the exotic birds and all that. I don't see much of a store around you. What do you buy? I collect the evidence of your kills, Traveler. That which the Samarakans fear, even in their cities, the beasts they cannot control. I collect the bounties of their flesh and pay you in coin. So that's good to know. So if we need to make money, this is a good way to do it. 
That is all they trust of us, Tashalar. Our wines and our hunting. I would be out there myself, save for a wound in my leg that must first heal. So while I rest, they have hired me to examine the kills of the bounty hunters to make sure that they are legal. So if we could do the heal, I could help heal your leg. Your kindness is welcome, but I fear this is a trial I must undergo on my own. It is the way of my family to bear the wounds they suffer in battle, provided they do not threaten the life, of course. My foolishness earned me this. My patience will see it healed, but I thank you for your gesture. Returning to the trail we marked before, was there anything else you wish to ask me about bounties? Let's see, survival. The area around here is full of creatures. Are there any specific ones they fear? All seem to trouble the people of Samarak, but at times more seem to bother them than, than others. I shall let you know if they are offering if they are offering more than the usual coin. Speak to me again should you have something to offer, and here is a satchel for the evidence of such. In the meantime, good day and good hunting to you. Okay, so I guess we can put the stuff in the satchel. So, what are the latest bounties? Spiders of an alarming size seem to plague the wilderness of this nation, Hunter. Should you reduce their number by eight, their price should reflect a grateful Samurai. And that's all we can really talk about, so that's all for now. Farewell. Let's talk to this other person. Hail to you, stranger. You seem out of place here. Uh, we could do an Intimidate, but I think we'll just do a lore check. You don't seem like a local. Have a bit of that Tashalaran look. Wise and well-spoken. From Talishar is where my sister and I hail. From Tashluta we traveled by ship to hidden Samogol. Here we will train until we are skilled enough to brave the mountain journey back. She is injured at the moment, so now we must wait. Alright. Guess we could do diplomacy. That doesn't seem to sit well with you. I... Yes, this is so. My sister is well-spoken, calm and proud. And I... Share her pride. And none of her patience with dealing with this city's cowardly officials. I am one for the wilderness. So what's stopping you from hunting? My sister, Kwesi, and I were hunting the great boar, Balalak. We peppered his hide with boats, but to no avail. He fled and gave her a wound in her leg to remember her life. Now she works handling the bounties of the land, and I... I wait. What creatures do you favor hunting the most? In truth, I hunt all kinds, but the wilds of the jungle and the creatures within are what I love best. Would that I could be using that knowledge now. Why don't you join us? I must not. My sister. Your sister can take care of herself in Shula. It may be that Holy Savra sent these people to you. Cast the cards and you may see this is so. Right, let's use Noradiel. I agree. Let's cast the cards. Do you have a deck? I do. Stranger, take these and have my sister read for her faith. Bluff. Please let me. My predictions have never been wrong. I am skeptical, stranger. But we shall see. It is unmistakable. Not a single negative card. Not one disaster. How can such a thing be? It is a sign, sister. You were meant to travel, and I shall wait here for you until you return. There is good money in this, and perhaps you too shall find your fortune. Very well. Stranger, my skills are at your disposal. I shall assist you as best as I am able. Alright, so we got her as a companion. I shall. So let's check out her stats. She's a level 5 ranger, her name is Inshula. 
And if you don't do that bluff check, I think she charges you like several hundred gold to join your party. But if you're able to do that check, then she joins you for free. So, it's pretty good. We have a... Oh, she has an animal companion. Oh, it looks like she's got like a panther. And she has two weapon fighting. So what's she doing with the crossbow? Well, we're going to have to remedy that soon if we get some money. Oh, you got two potions that you don't even know what they are. Unidentified. Unidentified. Well, let's give them to somebody with a lore skill. Yes. Yeah, when we get some money, we'll have to give her another weapon because she does have a long sword. Okay, so these were cure potions, and we'll just hold on to those for now. And this is that satchel that we got. Alright, so let's continue on the perimeter here and see if anybody will talk to us. Oh, okay. Let's talk to this person. Well, well. You don't look like you belong here, little magpie. A recent import to the friendly shores of Samarak. What do you think, Arathiuk, my pearl? You know what? I think we got a lot in common, you and I. You know, we're both tieflings. You have an orc companion. I have an orc companion. Yeah, we do have a lot in common. Hmph. <laughs> You'll have to excuse him. He always gets a little jealous when I pay attention to other men. So, little bird, what makes you fly over to my store? Something catch your eye, perhaps? I am Vadinia, as they call me here. That delicious jade tiger there is Aretuk, my bodyguard. I'm a merchant of my own renown, known in what circles I seek to be. Connections I have of all kinds, we sparrow, and many pockets and many minds. So, what do you do here? Oh, dabble in the rabble, selling, buying, collecting things of interest. And occasionally, I seek a willing friend to line their palms with coins in exchange. Tasks strange, but not terrible. I assure the little bird. You mentioned tasks. I did. You heard right, my eager bird. Things I could use for gold you could use, perhaps, I think. Oh, but alas, you have no one to speak for you here, do you, my poor pigeon? You must roost here until someone sets you free to fly around the suspicious land without worry. When that happens, my little one, come back to me, and we shall speak again. Now, what else can I do for you, wee bird? Show me what you have for sale, of course. So we got a merchant here. And it looks like she sells some pretty good armors and items and stuff. Stuff for a monk. Let's see. Yeah, let's check out the weapons. Well, she has, uh, war maces. Oh, no shurikens? She does have a short sword plus one, though. Well, I guess we'll have no choice but to make some shurikens. Because that's what the... Blazing Storm is built for is using shurikens. And she does have some spells that Norediel already has that I've picked. But she has some others that she doesn't, so we could possibly buy those in the future. And then it looks like she had some pretty mundane trinkets. And a bunch of trap kits, huh? Oh, there's some recipes. Notice the recipes get more expensive for the stronger items. And she also sells a Stone of Alarm. Alright, very well. Now let's go over to this guy with the dinosaur. Let's talk to him. The blessings of Uteo be upon you, travelers. What can this humble servant do for you? I guess we'll do lore. It's odd for a priest of... Ubteo to be found outside the city of Mezro, isn't it? Quite so. Yushai and I are impressed by your knowledge. 
The great father of dinosaurs appeared to me and stretched out his long claws to Summergold, and thus I went. As his city says, if I were not meant to be here, I would not be. Thus, to continue, how can this one help you? Let's see. What do you do here? Feeling. An observation of things which are pleasing to the eyes of Bootail, Traveler. Thus, to continue, how can this one help you? Why don't you join me? Join? Hmm. This is most curious. Yet I fear the Lord of Dinosaurs has no objection. Let me check with you, Shy, and know his mind on this. <laughs> He's talking to a dinosaur. It is decided. I shall come with you. Uh, I guess we'll we'll go with Laryl. Er, perhaps I was mistaken to ask for aid. Not at all. We are still eager to assist you. Be at your ease. There is one thing I must do first. It seems you walk with too many souls at the moment. So shall it be. Yusha and I will meet you at the tavern known as Lear's Trick should you need us. We look forward to our new journey. Okay, so... Since we don't have the leadership feat... We can't have more than five people in our party. So if we want to put him in our party, we're going to have to go back to the tavern. And I probably will because he actually counts as two because he has that dinosaur companion. I also want to see what level he is. I want to see if he's higher than the other one we got. Clever choice, Traveler. Dispense with the frippery of those around you. Ignore their seagull cries. You want things you can use, do you not? Show me your wares. Okay, so this guy sells more mundane items than that woman over there does. Whoa. Alright, let's zoom out here. Okay. Notice all, like, the, the cockatoos everywhere? Yeah, I guess that means we're in the jungle. Yeah, he doesn't sell any plus anythings here, so... All pretty mundane weapons and armor. If we don't have very much money, this is where we would be buying it from. And he sells a bunch of spells. Looks like a mixture of divine oh, and yes. arcane. Confusion is level four, so we should come back for that later. When we start taking Eldritch Knight levels, we will advance in caster level like a wizard. And we'll receive the same spells at the level a wizard would at that same level. Oh, and he does sell more recipes over here, too. So if we want to yes. waste our money, we can buy some of these recipes. But I wouldn't buy a recipe unless I was actually going to build something. Or craft something in this case. So yes. if we wanted to craft, let's say... Oh, something we don't have, like uh, a rapier. We'd have to, we'd probably buy that separately. All right, here's Sasani. Let's see what she has to say. And you're certain no progress has been made since then? Yes, my lord. Once the business at the keep was established, it seems they vanished. I've heard little talk about it since. Sasani, I object. This traveler's information is suspect at best. Who knows but that he didn't hear your name and contact you hoping for coin. You forget yourself, Monsieur. Master Volo was sent here by my, our associate, Bill Foss, and this news is grave. And combined with recent events, it foretells things I am displeased to hear. But, aha, I see other survivors have seen fit to make an appearance. Wise of them. Volo, we shall discuss this more later. Nasirin, see to repairing your tone when you address me next. And Luare, I shall review your report on the wreck later. Thanks, my lady. Yes, Lady Sasani. No problem at all. Of course, my Lady Sasani. 
I am at your disposal. All right, so let's talk to her. Welcome, travelers. I am Sasani, owner of this mercantile house, and it was a ship under my employ that you were traveling on, the ill-fated Vigilant. You may have noticed that the guards will not let you leave the city. Not that they wouldn't love to see you slain by the denizens of the wilderness, but they'd much rather do the job themselves. And with enough time, and without my protection, they will. Is that a threat or I'm not afraid of the guards? Let's say, let's do intimidate. Is that a threat? It is a reality, traveler. The natives of this land do not take kindly to foreigners and slights against their pride. Necessary to secure your freedom, yes, but it is not without its consequences. The Council of Samarak will not allow me to protect you unless you are under my employ. And if the guards do not see you perform this part, they will kill you at the slightest hint of suspicion. Fortunately, I have tasks that need doing, and I believe your resilience will help you to fill that role. Oh, well, I guess we could do intimidate. I'm not working for anyone without pay. Very well. If your skill at negotiation boils down to brute force, I shall reveal I was planning to give you coin for your efforts. Sending you out into the wilds of Samarak with your existing meager trappings would hardly be practical. There are a pair of tasks I should ask your assistance with, both of which require you to return to the scene of the shipwreck. Undoubtedly, you are not fond of this location, but it cannot be helped. Let's see what they have to say. Okay, so that must be like an intelligence check. Let me guess, you're interested in the lost cargo. A reasonable deduction, indeed. You may well succeed at this operation. That ship was carrying a number of goods valuable to my operation here. It would distress me if they were to be lost. If you were to return and acquire as much salvageable cargo as you were able, I should be pleased with the results. Let's see. I would assume the second task has something to do with the first, correct? The wreck. I am convinced it was not an accident, but I lack proof to support this theory. Take this report, investigate the area, and document what you find. The authorities will see this as a harmless insurance investigation, but it will tell me far more. Here, this ring shall prove that you are under my employ, and this gold should be sufficient to allow you to properly equip yourselves before you venture out of the city. While you are at the wreck site, see if you can find any additional survivors, and be wary. It seems both our fortunes have not been promising recently. I would be careful for any threats that seem intent on continuing that trend. Okay, so this thing talks about the trading system. I'm not too familiar with it, but we can get resources and trade between towns and I guess make money that way. So I guess I'll be learning this on the fly. I really didn't master that the last time I attempted this. But yes. we did level up, so why don't we take this time right now to level up everybody. Okay, let me see. I think we're going to go with another swashbuckler level. Yeah. Okay, got the papers right here. We're going to have to give him another point to dex. That'll boost it up to 20, give our modifier to plus 5, and then I guess we'll just choose some skills that we have class skills for. So we'll do bluff. Well, I don't want to do diplomacy just yet. Should we do disable device? Because that'll eat up two points, won't it? Yeah, we could do Tumble for sure. And if we do Lore, that'll leave us with five in which to spend. And I suppose we could do some of these Rogue skills. But then that would leave us with one point left over now, wouldn't it? So we might as well put that into Diplomacy. That would leave us with an even number. Which can let us give us a point to Disable Device. 
And what it should be? Should it be open lock? Or move silently? I think it should be like open lock. Okay. And we get Grace yes. plus one. So let's level up Laryl. We're going to give him another cleric level. Until we get to level six. And after that, we're going to take Stormlord levels. And we're going to give him a point to wisdom, it says here. And then we got three skill points, so this should be easy. Concentration, spellcraft, and hmm, yeah, spellcraft. What was that other one? Heal, there it is. Alright, that was pretty easy. Follow me. And we will give Naredriel another level in Swashbuckler because she's only about level two right now. So we have a lot of skill points in which to assign for her. And she does have able learners, so we can do cross classing no problem. And we're gonna want to do concentration because she will be casting a lot of spells in the future. I guess we'll want to do move silently. Well, you know what? I don't think move silently and hide are that important. But we do want to do spellcraft. It's only important because in later levels, and I don't even think we'll make it, we're going to be taking assassin levels. Well, we will be taking an assassin level at level 14. So hopefully we'll make it to there. At least. It does have us take nine levels of Eldritch Knight. And I'm not sure if we'll be able to take them all. Because that stops at level 18, it says here. Yeah, according to this, we won't even be able to take an Eldritch Knight level until level 9. Okay, now it says here we should get the practiced spellcaster feet. So let's go to where the wizard feats are. Spellcasting feats. The practice spellcaster wizard. Let's see, our caster level for the chosen spellcasting class increases by plus four. And it can't increase your caster level beyond your hit die. Okay, so what that means is that now our caster level is level three because we are level three. So I could see why that was useful to get, because we're taking three swashbuckler levels before we take another wizard level. We're going to take another wizard level at level five. A lot of these builds, they stop their swashbuckler levels at swashbuckler Listening. level three because of the insightful strike, and then I guess people don't think there's anything useful past that. All right, so let's level up Constantina. And we're going to give her a favorite soul level. And we got four skill points. We don't need to put any more into hide. We got just enough. Just enough that we need. What do we need it for? The Frenzied Berserker. That's right. We're going to take that. But that's at least level 14. And in the feat, it says here to take Cleave. And I guess we're going to need to take it in order to get the Frenzied Berserker class. Oh, we don't get any more spells in level 1, but we can fill up on our, I guess, horizons for the favorite soul. And we can't swap any out. Alright, so that should do it. Alright, so yes. now we will go equip ourselves in the next episode. This is Big Lowe signing off. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, and Tango Umbedia.